In this video, I'm going to share with you the top six most common questions that come up in Hobby Lobby interviews and help you plan the best answers you can to these. So let's look at a question that gets asked in every interview and is incredibly important to have an answer ready for, and that is what hours can you do at Hobby Lobby? And let's look at what they're actually looking for. They want people that can offer as much flexibility as possible. They want people who are open-minded, and ideally they want people that can say yes. Remember, if they ask about a specific time, they say, can you work this day? Can you work these hours? They have that in mind, and if you're saying no, that may be what you have to say, but realize that that will reduce your chance of getting the job. You want to say yes to as much as possible. The next thing is we need to look at the answers that you should use at a Hobby Lobby interview, and one thing to be aware of is Hobby Lobby, because of their beliefs, close on a Sunday so you'll always have that day available so when you're scheduling and thinking about your availability bear in mind that Sunday Hobby Lobby stores are closed so if you've got great availability one way to answer this is to say I am very happy to say that I have very good availability and could work flexibly around the full range of Hobby Lobby opening hours and say that really confidently and that's a really great answer if you have great availability. Another phrase you can use is to say I would be open to overtime if needed that's showing a bit more flexibility and it's just offering that bit extra. Decide whether you're going for a part-time or a full-time role. Be aware of what they are looking for and try and meet that and be clear about what you're actually offering. If you cannot work full-time, you have to say that you're looking for a part-time role and you want to try as much as possible to meet what they're looking for and apply for the right role. The next thing you could think about saying if they've told you what they're looking for on the job ad, you could say the hours you have advertised are perfect for me and I can commit to working these because that's what they're looking for and you want to say that you can do those. You could also talk about my preference is, say what you would prefer if you're a little bit more restricted on availability. So say what you would really ideally want to work and then if you can say, however, I'd be open to, what's your second choice? What else could you offer? And try and offer as much as possible. The way to mess up this question and get a really bad answer is to talk about, I can't do this time, I can't do this time, I can't do this time, and give them a list of reasons why they shouldn't hire you by listing all the times you can't do. That's a terrible way to answer this. Focus on what you can do, offer as much flexibility as possible, and use some of those phrases on that list, and you'll have a great answer ready. The next one is what do you know about Hobby Lobby and you need to be prepared for this. They will ask what do you know about our company and if you don't know and you just give a really basic or a poor answer, it's really not going to impress them. You've got to go there with knowledge and I will give you the key knowledge that you need to successfully answer this question. And the way that you start this is by just covering the very fundamentals of their business by saying they are an American chain of arts and crafts stores and then let's just build on that by saying something like the Hobby Lobby offers an exceptional selection and they offer great value. So you're basically fleshing out that basic description of their business. They are known for their Sunday closures. That's a very key part of their business. They are a very conservative business. The family that controls the company have very conservative views that you should be aware of and that the company is based on a very strong Christian ethos. And that's something to be aware of and also mention in the interview because Hobby Lobby sees that as extremely important and it's worth mentioning. They control a lot of their manufacturing and their own distribution as a way to keep costs down and have control over their supply chain. They often negotiate very good value rents. Hobby Lobby typically takes over things like a Kmart that has been closed down and they can jump in there and get a very good deal on the real estate rather than building their own. So they are very opportunistic in picking great value locations so that they can keep costs down for their customers and be competitive. But on the flip side, Hobby Lobby is known for raising their minimum wage and has historically and hopefully still does pays more than minimum wage and that working for the company typically are slightly better comp compensated than their competitors. The company was founded back in 1972 by David and Barbara Green. That's an, a time and a set of names to memorize. It was founded on the back of a $600 loan when David Green quit his supervisor job to launch the company. The company started in Oklahoma City with their first store. These are simple facts just to reel off about its history to show that you've done some preparation. Another simple and easy thing to prepare, and remember this number changes, so you need to look up an up-to-date number. 
and just know how many stores is there and just say that number because the only people that know that number are people that actually bothered to do some research. And one of my top tips to really get that fluency and that confidence is to look up the Hobby Lobby website. Currently, they have a page called Our Story, which talks through the history of the company, what they're trying to offer and describes the business. So basically combine that web page with this information here, and you're going to have a nice, confident answer to get you through this question and impress them. The next question they often ask is, what is your greatest strength? And this is a great opportunity to show off things about you that are going to make you good at your job. So fundamentally for this question, you need to pick something that's actually important, something that really is an important strength, something that's useful to have. Have some example of when you've used this strength in a previous job or some sort of evidence that shows that you actually have this strength, that you've not just made it up. Make it relevant and it has to link back to Hobby Lobby. So pick something that will make you good at your job that they're actually going to care about. And I'll give you some suggestions about what you might want to say. The way to answer it is you say, one of my greatest strengths is, you have many strengths, but this is one that I've decided to talk about now. You say, in the past, this strength has, talk about previous jobs that you've had where you've used this strength that you've picked to be really great at your job, and then link it back to Hobby Lobby. This strength will help me at Hobby Lobby buy. How is it going to make you really great at your job? And there's a really strong answer. So some ideas, customer service skills or experience, say that I'm highly experienced in working in customer service roles. That's a strength that you're hardworking, you've got good attention to detail, or maybe you've got lots of arts and crafts knowledge that you are passionate about arts and crafts and that that is one of your hobbies and you're going to bring that passion and that knowledge to your job. These are some great ways to answer the question. So pick a strength, think deeply about what you're good at, and what your experience is, back it up and tell them how it's going to make you great at Hobby Lobby and you'll have a fantastic answer. On the flip side, they can ask what is your biggest weakness? And this is one not to mess up. And I'll give you some suggestions of possible weaknesses that do actually show a weakness, but are not going to have a massive impact on you getting the job. So what you want to say is that you want to show that you know what to improve. You want to avoid anything that's a fake weakness, so you have to make sure it's an actual weakness. Because if you say a fake weakness, it suggests you don't really know what you need to work on, and that doesn't look very good. You need to talk about fixing it, so spend more time talking about how you could potentially overcome this weakness than why it is completely debilitating, will make you awful at your job. And then just do something very simple and ensure it's something that Hobby Lobby won't care about, that it's something that is not going to have a huge impact on their business. So bad answers are things like, I hate being such a perfectionist and talking about how everything has to be perfect and how it maybe slows you down at work. It's not really the greatest example of a weakness, having to get everything perfect and being, you know, I, I'm obsessed about being brilliant at my job and this is such a great weakness. It's not, it won't be taken seriously. And you might even see the panel rolling their eyes and losing interest. Avoid that one. Or on the flip side, seeing anything that would actually make you bad at your job. So something like, I often forget to shower and sometimes customers complain that I stink that's going to lose you the job. That's going to completely put them off hiring you for obvious reasons. So it needs to be a weakness that doesn't affect your job is an actual weakness and something you can actually improve. And the way you answer it, and I'll give you suggestions of weaknesses, is to say a weakness that I'm keen to address is, say what your weakness is, and then spend the time talking about to overcome this weakness, I plan to suggest one or two things you could do to make your weakness go away, and you're going to have a great answer. So weaknesses you could talk about is if you're applying for a store that is in a predominantly English-speaking area, if you're applying somewhere with a high Spanish-speaking population, be careful about this one. But you could say that you only speak English because probably the majority of people applying have that as a weakness as well. And the, the vast, vast, vast majority of customers you would be dealing with, you're speaking in English. So it's not going to cause an immense amount of problem in your job. And people coming into Hobby Lobby Store would expect to be talking in English to English speaking staff. It's not going to be a big shock. So that's one potential one to use though it is, of course, a weakness, and it's great to speak more than one language, and you could talk about your interest in learning a second language, and that would be a really great way for you to develop as a person and overall. If you're in a job that doesn't involve very much writing at all, you could talk about extended writing, that you're really bad at writing essays, that getting your ideas down on paper you struggle with. You can do it verbally, but if you have to write, it's not as strong spelling you're not going to be in a role probably that's going to involve speaking in front of whole rooms of people. Say that you've done maybe public speaking once and it was terrifying, you hated it, and you don't like speaking to large groups of people, say over 10, that could be a weakness. If you're not, not particularly great at saying no, or if you're not very good at delegating and you're not in a management role, 
then that's a potential weakness to consider. So pick one from that list or think up your own one that doesn't affect your ability to do the job and use that structure and you'll have a great answer to this. The next one is why do you want a job at Hobby Lobby? So I'm going to give you some suggestions of reasons you might want to work here. And what I'd suggest you do is maybe write down or memorize five or six reasons and you can plan an answer around that very simply. So if you know people that work at Hobby Lobby, you don't have to name them, but say you've spoken to employees and they've said lots of positive things about why this is a good place to work and talk about some of the positives you've heard about the company. Don't talk about any of the negatives, only focus on the positives and that might be part of your motivation. You could say that you love working with customers, that you want a job that's actually interacting with customers all the time. So that's something you really enjoy. If you've got a passion for arts and crafts, tell them that you've got a passion, tell them about what your hobbies are, tell them about what you've made in the past and that this is something you're really passionate about and you want to have a job that lines up with your passions. That you believe that Hobby Lobby invests in people, you might look up what training Hobby Lobby provides, what they've done for their previous employees, you might want to talk about that. That you could say it's a perfect match for my skills. If you've worked in retail before and you've been successful, talk about the success that you've had. That you want a job that involves being active, that you like working in a busy store environment. Say that you love to work in retail, link that to your previous success as well. You could say a phrase like, I can build a career here if you feel that you could stay with the company for a long time. That you might be a long-term loyal Hobby Lobby customer that is part of why you want to work for the company because you like them so much as a customer, for example. And you could talk about sharing your faith. Remember, Hobby Lobby is a very, very conservative company. And if you are not sharing their values, this would not really be somewhere that would be the greatest place for you to work. You might actively disagree with many of their policies. And so that would be problematic. So you probably want to share some of their values if you're working here. Otherwise, you might find a lot of conflict with the company because they are quite um, extreme with regard to some of the conservative views. So you need to think carefully about that before uh, joining the company potentially. The next thing you could say is that you're potentially very knowledgeable about the company and about their products and you can link that to your passion for arts and crafts and that could be another reason. So pick maybe five or six of these and talk about those in your interview. The next thing you need to be aware of is at the end of the interview, they may ask, do you have any questions for us? And the right answer is, yes, I do. And then you say what your questions are. So some suggestions are, Things like, I've heard positive things about the training Hobby Lobby provides to their employees. Could you please tell me about this and find out what training you could engage in and show a real interest in that training and development? You could say, what was it that originally attracted you to join Hobby Lobby and link that to the reasons why you want to join. You could say, can you tell me what the next steps are in the hiring process at Hobby Lobby? And then you could say, what do you like most about working at Hobby Lobby and share that passion and then lastly you need to make sure you end the interview positively thank them and be sincere in that sincere in that thank for the in, thanks for the interview and emphasize that you're really interested in this role and that it is perfect for you on the flip side hobby lobby don't like time off requests so asking for time off or delaying your start date before you've even got the job or moving to another store they want to staff this store and if you talk about going somewhere else you are not going to win many points or be very popular so I hope this was helpful to you. Please post in the comments below what questions Hobby Lobby asked in your interview. And finally, thank you very much for watching.